Hi, everyone. I'm Rick Bensignor. Today is Tuesday, July 20th, and welcome to this week's In the No Trader show. On tap for this week, we're going to do something a little different than we do most weeks in the sense that we're going to concentrate the entire show on looking at the uh, 30 components of the Dow. I will try to get through all 30 names in the 30 minutes we have. Uh, so we're going to just zip through things. And I'm doing that because of the big sell-off we had yesterday. And of course, the as of right now, the Dow is back up over 500 points today on Tuesday. And therefore, uh, a lot of whipsawing. But let's take a look really what's going on and if there's any real technical damage or not. So that's what we're going to do. We won't do any trader education. We'll get right to our charts. As a reminder, sign up for my weekly ETF tactical trader report. It comes out Thursday nights. Uh, reviews the markets in a macro fashion. We'll look deeply into bond market, usually the dollar, gold, and very deeply into the S&P for key levels and structure. Um, and then, of course, I give a new trading ETF idea each week and review all open positions until they're closed out. Uh, go to inanotrader.com to sign up for that. Also, the monthly 7-Eleven Spider Sector ETF report. Uh, the intent of that report, it's a monthly report, comes out the last trading day of each month so that you can reallocate for the coming month, uh, no less than five, no more than seven of the 11 uh, macro sector spider ETFs uh, with the goal of outperforming the S&P. 10 months into it, so far we started last August 1st, uh, we are outperforming the S&P by 371 basis points, that's 3.71%. And that is huge in the money management field. And all we do is tweak each month um, and try to avoid the underperforming sectors. So you can sign up for that. That is, uh, I believe, no more than $87 per month uh, for people who sign up just for that report. Sign up for multiple reports and you get even bigger discounts. Again, go to inthenotrader.com for that. Email me at rick at inthenotrader.com. So let's go quickly to the charts. Um, we're going to have less than one minute per chart to go through each one of the names. And my goal is to get through all 30. So let's start with the Dow Jones itself. Here's the, everything we look at will be a weekly chart. So here's the Dow Jones, including, you see that we are virtually on the highs of this week as we right now, as we speak rather, up 545 points. So we, uh, we're essentially back to yesterday's open. So we had a small gap down from last Friday, uh, a phenomenal bounce on the first of the trend lines that we can draw. Uh, so notice that this week's low uh, came against this higher of two navy blue trend lines. Uh, then we've got a second one down here. And uh, in the bigger picture, as long as we're above 32, let's say 250 in round numbers, uh, this is still just you know pullbacks along an uptrend. Now, we do have some 13s to deal with over the last several months. And you know those are exhaustive type signals. And they've been good in the sense that we really haven't gone anywhere for a few months. On the upside, potential resistance at uh, 35,560 and then 36,6 and a quarter. Okay, one other thing we will look at is just the uh, US 10 year yield. And I want you to see, and I've talked about this before, um, we are on a setup nine down this week. That's nine consecutive Fridays. And we're not a Friday yet, but I'll assume that we're going to close less than the close from four Fridays prior. So this pattern is, if you have a number underneath it, it's because the close is less than the close from four Fridays prior. Uh, when you do nine, you often have a uh, initial change in trend, and sometimes it's a bigger change in trend. Uh, the bottom was made, made on a nine. The subsequent lows were made on 13s. We rallied. We got to a nine up. Again, we rallied a long ways, but it's only the last part of the rally that you actually have this pattern, nine consecutive Friday closes above the close from four Fridays back. Uh, that came two weeks before the high. And then we've been in that downtrend and then the plunk. I think, so here's, I've, I've highlighted in yellow the Fibonacci box, the 38 to 62% retracement of the rally that we saw off of the March 2020 lows. I have high confidence that bond yields bottom into this zone 
uh, from a timing perspective, we're on a nine count. Um, I am personally, I am selling out of my bond positions and will not likely go back into them for a long time. Uh, to me, it's, I just don't see the value of locking in 1.2% um, for 10 years. Um, I always think you're gonna get a better return in the stock market than that. And therefore, I just don't see the value in holding onto bonds as a personal investor. Uh, your chance for capital losses as rates go higher over time will far um, outpace the small percent return that you get. So I think this is, uh, we're close to and in, in the zone of where you wanna walk away from the bond market for good. Okay, um, let's get to individual component names. So we're gonna start with Apple and just work our way uh, through all the charts. We got 22 minutes to go, three quarters of a minute per chart. Here we go. Recent aggressive sequential 13, last time we had it, it was a sell-off for a month and it, you know, in a percentage terms, decent amount. Here we've gone from about 150 to almost 140 in less than a week, but notice where we bounced. The low of the move is against the bearish propulsion level of 141.28. If you have to properly close underneath that in order to then say that we'll go down to 132 and a half, we bounced on it. That's still bullish. So there's been no break yet in Apple of any material concern. Upside targets include at this point, um, 151.34, 158.20 and 165.07. On the downside, 132.56, and on a bigger breakdown to 115 and change. Next, Microsoft. Um, stronger chart made its all time high last week. Uh, we'll get a nine count probably in two weeks, as long as we close above the close from four weeks back. We went through this whole consolidation phase of 13s that took us sideways, and then we started a whole nother leg up. I actually have no upside targets beyond here. Downside first level support 269 and change, then uh, 255.01 and 226. Visa, same thing, all time high last week, seven count just like Microsoft, similar type look straight up, look at the angle of ascent here, uh, support 230 and change, then down to 210 and change. Upside targets include 254 and three quarters, 262.65, and you know, that can be 265, uh, 260, uh, 262, 65, and 265. Next, JP Morgan. Banks topped. Um, this is now over a month ago from its all time high. Notice the 13 is calling for somewhat exhaustion. Uh, we've broken underneath the propulsion level here. It is not qualified yet, uh, therefore, it's not a proper break. Uh, you can, I, I would guess that there'll be some resistance right near that same level of 150, 140. On a further break, look for a move to 135. On the upside, uh, resistance 172-ish, and then up at 164, 165. J&J, &J. Uh, 13 on the, well, actually the all-time high, it looks like it was made back here in January, but subsequently, 13 count stall things, pulled again back to the uh, sequential, uh, the uh, aggressive, no, sorry, the propulsion bearish level, hasn't properly broken it. Now we've got a 13 again, this is somewhat cautious. Um, if we close up this Friday and open higher next week and close higher on the week above this week's high, whatever this week's high ends up being, you actually get a near term buy signal uh, with a target of 172 that's only uh, two percent higher, nothing big. Uh, bigger up move looks for 183. Walmart. This peaked last year. Hasn't been able to do much since. Um, not much going on here, but still can't properly break down under 137 and three quarters. Uh, so for now, that's still a support level. Followed by one about 131. Upside targets 162 and change to 167. Uh, United Health, UNH, uh, made all time highs back here in May. Again, didn't properly break the 398 level, even though it did. Uh, closed beneath it, but it's not, it's not qualified. Therefore, that is still a support level. 
On the upside, the only target I see is 442. Procter & Gamble, consumer name, peaked last fall. Um, sold down, and now we've got some 13s to deal with. Notice it still couldn't break beneath this level properly. Um, let's see, this is not a qualified breakout to the upside this week. However, the, the targets I'd have on the upside are 156 and change to 159 and change, and then all the way up at 198 ish uh, with, with a much bigger rally on the downside. I'd say I'd still look at 135 and a half ish as first level support, followed by 126 and a half ish. Uh, Home Depot. Made its whole time high in the spring, in May, pulled back. Um, still kind of hanging on a signal either way, neither of them um, are active yet. If Friday closes above 323.17, uh, and next week opens higher and closes higher and, and closes higher than also um, this week's high, then you would target 348 followed by 397 and a half. Disney. Um, notice the 13s calling for a peak pullback, nine consecutive Fridays that the close was less than the close from four Fridays back. Happened to stop right on the propulsion exhaustion level. Good buy signal right there at 166-ish, uh, now 175-ish. You still have a fair amount of resistance up above. Um, so we're still kind of sideways here with no real direction near term. I do see a chance here for a possible head and shoulders. Needs more time to develop, but something to keep an eye on. Nike. All-time high a week ago, it's pulled back 13 here. Um, so also kind of tired. Uh, this 13 had a multi-month pullback. And on the upside now, the only thing I really see is up at 180. Um, if we close this Friday above 158.62, and next week opens higher trades higher than this week's high and closes above this Friday's high, uh, you get a signal that um, would suggest this has the, the room to go up to 181-ish. Coke, K-O, uh, peaked early last year before the big decline that took us to the March bottom. Um, stalling here kind of since the nine, not really progressing much, still still has resistance up to about 58 and a half. This properly breaks 58 and a half. It's got a clear shot to the mid sixties. On the downside support between 50 and 51. Verizon, um, let's see, looks like early 2020. Yeah, it was the all time high back uh, actually late late 2019. So good resistance between 60 and 62. Notice uh, the nine down here caught the bottom rally. We're still in a zone here in a couple more weeks. You have the chance to make a 13 for a potential buy signal. Um, here you play the range. I'd probably you know, throw an RSI or something on and, and just try to um, look for overbought, oversold. Haven't gotten to either in a while. So uh, you get a good dividend, but as far as stock trading, it's kind of dead money. Cisco, CSCO. Um, 13 this week for upside exhaustion. You don't take the signal right away, but if I'm looking at here, you had a 13 on the all time high, nine down on the bottom. Um, I mean, look, you still have an uptrend here. And let's see, just barely trying to hang on here. Tough call here. I'm not sure what I'd do. I, I, maybe I'd sell upside calls. Uh, if I had some Cisco, they were covered calls just to pocket some money. Um, and I'd probably sell uh, 50, maybe 58s and or 63s. Um, and in, as long as this is about 40, uh, where's that about? Just about 49, it's good. I wouldn't want to see it break 49. Intel, 
Um, so this peaked early 2020, been sideways, also kind of dead money. I'd wait a few weeks. If we got down towards 49-ish over the next few weeks, and you do that two to three weeks from now, uh, I, I contemplate being a buyer against this TDST line here. In the meantime, it's kind of just hanging here. You got a few uh, lows, you know, kind of right where this week's low is, but uh, I'd probably wait a few weeks if I was going to buy it, try to get it at a lower price. Salesforce CRM. Um, so this hasn't really done anything since last summer. If anything, it's been slightly lower, probably about the midpoint of the whole range, uh, staring at a 13 here. Um, to me, kind of deadish money, not much to do there. Merck, same thing, dead money. Um, I see nothing of significance here. I bet you if I put up long-term moving average, ah, what do you know? Okay, I thought it'd be a little flatter, but look, so the 200 week moving average has really caught most of the lows, you know. Um, so if, if this will flatten some more over time as these parts, uh, these bars become part of the calculation. Um, I mean, next upside target would be 83-ish, but um, same type of thing, maybe a slight bullish edge, not, not much more than that. Chevron, big oil has had its troubles recently. Um, so this got uh, twice just above 110 to 112-ish uh, and it's pulled back. As long as we're above 92 and a half, it's okay. Um, if you get an up close, a Friday that's an up close relative to the prior Friday, and then you break underneath 92 and a half, it's in more trouble with a $75 target, which is where I first got into this. Uh, personally, I still own uh, Chevron at 75 or so. And uh, I sold some at 90 and I still have the balance. McDonald's. Um, all time high on a 13 signal, been going sideways for two months since. Notice here, a perfect example of not properly breaking under the bearish level that if properly broken under, then says there's enough momentum to come down here. Never broke it properly. That's why this is still, you know, in a moderately bullish picture, even though we keep getting some 13s that take us sideways. Um, if you really like the name, then in theory, you could buy it versus this week's low. Um, but there is no particular signal there. You've got to get above 240.70 to get a move towards the upside. Um, and I don't even have an upside target without going into more analysis. Honeywell, we're actually going to get through all 30 of these because we've got 10 minutes left. Um, Honeywell, okay. Some 13s in here, stalling things, same thing. Properly held against 213 and change. So we've come back. We already hit uh, this target up. Next target, 239 and a half. And then you've got them up at 251, 254 or so, 255. Uh, so still hanging in there. And, and uh, I'd only be concerned if, uh, if these lows here down under 212 got taken out. Amgen. Um, so here's the spike high early this year. Uh, still have our uptrend line intact. Um, you know, it's been dead money for a year, um, but nothing that shows real upside exhaustion either. So, um, you know, there are going to be other better names in, in the, uh, space, but right now, um, this, this still hangs in, so it looks okay. American Express, um, you can see here also just some. Nine bottom, nine high, nine somewhat high. I mean, we've gone pretty much nowhere since that nine count. Most important thing is that this holds above 156.98 on Friday closes. Um, if it does, then we still can make targets up here at uh, 181, 183 and change, and all the way up at 201 over time. Boeing. Failed to get above its 200 week moving average after the breakdown 
Um, this had so many 13s in 2018, 2019. Uh, we were able to kind of just be really defensive on this name to clients and told them not to be buyers. Um, and just when we had multiple 13s, we said, certainly you start taking some profits. We got the big decline. Uh, there was no nine count or anything on the bottom there, um, except just held against the propulsion bearish level. So it didn't uh, get a new signal down. And then it rallied and again, held against the bearish propulsion level, didn't break down. And here we are, we're still above 189 and change. I can tell you, I have a bid in right near here in case we touch it in the next few weeks, just on the odd chance that uh, once again, this bearish propulsion level holds. Uh, so I'm, I know I'm bidding myself for my own account right near that level. Uh, on the upside, you really got to hurdle the 200 week. And even if you do, you're still going to have all this resistance from uh, two years of distribution on top. So um, Boeing still has a fair amount of work to do. And I don't expect to see it um, get much better uh, above uh, that 200 week without really struggling. IBM reported earnings today, if I'm not mistaken, and they beat, um, and the stock's up nicely today uh, after getting trashed yesterday, like everything else did. Uh, notice too, 13 near the bottom, 13's on top, nine on a top, nine on a top. Um, so we pulled back to the 200 week moving average here, um, and you're getting a bounce, but more importantly, as long as it's above 132.70, it then still has the chance to get and kind of test those highs from early 2020. Um, Goldman Sachs. So this is something that uh, I've, I've spoken to clients about here too. 13 in the bottom in 2018 into a nine high, into a nine low. In order to get a 13, you always have to do a nine first. So um, <coughs> this nine, only worked for two weeks as a pullback, held the bearish propulsion level. This rally pulls back, holds the bearish propulsion level. And we're still holding the bearish propulsion level. The newest one at 357-ish, uh, where is that nine? Let's see, that's 357. So we're still above that, but I don't see this skyrocketing either right now. It's still anything near 400 is gonna be resistance. Uh, 3M. So pulled back to the 200 week moving average. It does actually mean something in this name, even though it's pretty darn flat. It's played off of it a few times over the last few years. Um, nine down into a propulsion exhaustion level early part of last year on a sell off. The entire move up um, is pretty much peak near the nine up here. It's gone sideways for months. Uh, so important numbers now, 180, uh, 188-ish, and then 174 and change. Um, in 3M on the upside, uh, you've got 212, and then 235 and a half -ish as next targets on the, on the top side. Caterpillar. So this properly broke underneath its bearish propulsion level, which is why they're triangles instead of hyphenated lines. Um, and we have hit the propulsion exhaustion level to this move. So it said if it properly broke through here, look for it to get here. It has uh, one a seven count just beneath at 193 is the TDST line. Uh, so, on, on new lows, if we took out this week's lows in a couple of weeks, you know, you potentially look to buy again uh, near 193. Um, beneath that, it's, there isn't support until all the way down at 161. And at that point, if you got, and this would be the same for any of the names, um, you'd look to do then, I would use last year's low, the 2020 lows, uh, I'd do a Fibonacci you know, retracement from any one of those major lows to whatever the current high was, the all time, you know, the new all time high, and then you get that box. In this case, it's between the purple lines. So that's the 38 to 62% retracement. Uh, I would say on any of the names that look like this, where you, you basically went straight up off those 2020 lows, 
that um, Fibonacci box. So here, let's let's kind of highlight it. You know, so that zone would be an ideal place to be a buyer, I think, uh, in virtually any of these names that were straight up. Um, we have Dow, D-O-W. Okay, so here, same type of thing. It looks very similar to, to what CAT looks like. We're on a seven down towards a nine. Um, propulsion targets down at 54 and change. It's currently 58.80. Uh, it is not a qualified and confirmed breakdown, despite the fact that um, we're this much beneath that level. And now on the upside, look for 62 to uh, 60, the, the 62 to 63 range as being potential resistance. And if it gets through there, then you'd target 67. Walgreens boots. On a six down, just above the propulsion level at 43.80, uh, we're at 46.32. This week's low is 45.09. Same thing, anything here over the next few weeks is potential buy, if you like the name. Um, 13s definitely help call bottoms, but this has not gotten through its 200 week moving average, which is downward sloping. This topped, uh, looks like early 19, is that people know? This actually topped years before that. So 2015 is the all time high here. So it also means that there are plenty of trap buyers. Um, so that makes me less likely, especially with a downward sloping 200 week. You don't find all that many stocks with downward sloping 200 weeks, especially in the Dow Jones. Um, this one is, uh, you gotta love the name to really go play it down a few dollars lower. And the last one, is Travelers. So Travelers made an all-time high not that long ago, pulled back, held above its propulsion level at 143.19. We're kind of in no man's land here. Um, you know, if you're a bull, actually, I wanna see what's the angle here. Let's just check. All right, so we're, we're actually holding a pretty darn steep trend line. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if this does break, but also, you know, we got a good bounce off of this week's um, low, but we are still dealing with 13s. Um, so tough, you know, we're, we're near what also were all time, uh, prior all time highs. Uh, so we broke out and then we came through. So I don't know, tough, tough call in here, not, not much to do. But if you're long, as long as we're above 143.19, on Friday closes, uh, I think you're okay. If we break through that, uh, then I'd be more concerned. And that is it. We went through all 30 names uh, in the Dow Jones in the half hour we had. I hope this was helpful to you. I'm Rick Bensignor, and thanks for tuning in to this week's In The No Trader. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.